Our first step is to draw a picture based on the given information. We have the ball initially located one meter off of the ground surface, and then it is hit with an initial speed of V naught, and then the ball travels all the way 130 meters to the right, and it reaches a final position over here whose vertical height above the ground surface is 21 meters. Now, what we have done is we've taken the initial speed vector, which is shown by that red arrow, and we've broken it up into the x component, which points to the right, and the y component, which points upward. And we need expressions for those x and y components. So let's begin with the x component. Notice in the question that this angle above the horizontal was given as 35 degrees. So we can see from this right triangle, and if you'd like, you can mark a right angle right there, that the cosine of that 35 degree angle is equal to the adjacent side, which is the V initial X, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the V naught in red, the initial velocity. Now we want to solve this for the initial velocity in the X direction, so that V naught X. And to do that, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by the V naught. The V naughts cancel out on the right hand side, and then what we probably want to do is pick up our calculator and compute the cosine of 35 degrees. Just make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And so we end up with 0.82 approximately. So 0.82 times the V naught is equal to the initial velocity in the X direction. So let's label that accordingly in our picture. This is 0.82 V naught. Now for the y component, we're going to use a different trig function. We'll use the sine function because the sine of the 35 degree angle would equal the opposite side. Notice the side that is opposite of the 35 degree angle is the side marked v naught y. So it's opposite v naught y over the hypotenuse, which is the v naught. And then just like before, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by the v naught. Let's do the sine of 35 on our calculators. You're going to get about 0.57. So this means that 0.57 multiplied by the initial velocity is equal to the V initial in the Y direction. So let's label that over here accordingly as 0.57 V naught. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now what we do is we come over to a little bit of a table over here and we're gonna fill in all of the known information. So in the X direction, we just figured out that the initial velocity is the 0.82 V naught and then for the y direction, the initial velocity is the 0.57 v naught. Let's actually jump to the acceleration because in the x direction, there is zero acceleration. There's no force acting in the x direction, and therefore there's no acceleration. In the y direction, we have the force of gravity, which causes an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We'll skip the time for now. We don't know that either. And then the displacements. Now, the displacement in the x direction is 130 meters. In the y direction, you have to be a little bit careful. Let's recall that the delta y would equal the final y coordinate minus the initial y coordinate. Now, if we look back at our picture, the final y coordinate of the ball when it's over here is actually the 21 meters. And the initial y coordinate of the ball when it's over here is actually one meter. So the displacement in the vertical or y direction is the 21 minus one. This gives us a delta y of 20. So make sure that you use 20 here. Okay, so we have all the known information filled into the table. That moves us on to the next step, which is to pick an equation to help us begin to solve for some of these quantities, these unknown quantities. So let's put the equations down here. And these are actually written in terms of the y coordinate, but they are equally valid in the x direction. And we're actually going to examine this equation for a little bit during this problem. Now let's rewrite this equation using x values because that's where we're going to begin. So delta x is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by the time plus one half acceleration in the x direction times the time squared. Now we can fill in some known values. Remember that the delta x in the x direction was 130. The initial velocity in the x direction was the 0.82 v naught. Multiply that by the unknown time plus one half the acceleration in the x direction was zero, and the time again is unknown. Now this term will zero out, and we have an expression now for the time. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by the 0.82 v naught. And this will turn out to be a useful exercise to solve this. So pick up your calculators, do 132 divided by the 0.82, and you're gonna get about 159, roughly. 
So now we have 159 over the V initial. Notice the V initial is still in the denominator, and this is going to equal the time. Now this doesn't give us the value for time, but it's going to be a useful expression. So let's go back up into our table, and right now, for the time, we're going to put 159 divided by the V naught in for the X, as well as for the Y. Now even though we found the time in the X direction, the time in the Y direction is always the same. These are always going to be equal to each other. So far, so good. Now, it turns out we're going to use the same equation, but this time in the y direction. And we're going to fill in the known values. So we're going to be using this equation, again, but this time in the y direction. The delta y, we recall, was 20 meters, equaled the initial velocity in the y direction, which was that 0.57 times the v naught. Now, Check this out. You're going to be multiplying this by the time. We just figured out the expression for the time was 159 times v naught. So let's fill that in, and something miraculous will happen in just a moment. And then we'll do 1 half times the acceleration in the y direction, which was negative 9.8, and then multiplied by the time squared. Once again, put the 159 over v naught, and then don't forget to square it. That's very important. Now, here's the miracle. The v naughts cancel out right here. So that's pretty handy. Now you can multiply the 0.57 by the 159, and you're going to get about 91. So now you have 20 is equal to 91. And then over here, when you multiply 1 half times negative 9.8, you get a minus 4.9. And then you're going to square the 159, and you're going to get a pretty big number, 25,281 over. And you have to square the V initial in the denominator, so that's going to be V initial squared. Now we can solve for the initial speed very nicely here. Let's subtract 91 from both sides. So if you do that, you're going to get negative 71 is equal to negative 4.9 times this very big number over v naught squared. Then you can divide both sides by negative 4.9. Notice you can divide because there's a multiplication right there. So we do the opposite, which is division. So we divide both sides by negative 4.9. You're going to get about 14.5 on the left side. We are getting there. And then we'll multiply both sides of the equation by v initial squared. Remember that it is squared. They'll cancel out on this side. Then you can divide by the 14.5. So take that large number and divide by the 14.5. You get 1745 roughly. But that's equal to the initial speed squared. So to finish off the algebra here, we have to take the square root on both sides. And when you do that, you're going to get about 41.8. So the initial speed is approximately 41.8 meters per second. This becomes the correct answer to part A of the question. We will move up and see what part B wanted. And it wanted the time that it takes the ball to reach the wall. Oh, that's going to be very straightforward because we've already obtained the requisite expression for the time needed for the ball to reach the wall. It's this expression here. So why don't we just squeeze part B in here just because we can see the expression. To get the time for the ball to reach the wall, we just take the 159 and divide it by the initial speed that we just obtained, which was the 41.8 meters per second. And when we divide these, we're going to get a time of about 3.8 seconds. So this becomes the correct answer to part B. In part C, we wish to obtain the velocity components and the speed of the ball when it reaches the wall. So in essence, when they want the velocity components when the ball reaches the wall, they're actually looking for the final velocities in the x and in the y direction. So we're going to be using a different equation this time. Let's take a look at the equations again. And probably the best one to solve for the final velocity based on what we know right now is this equation here. Now we can write that equation for both the x and the y direction. So we'll have the final velocity in the x direction equals the initial velocity in the x direction plus the acceleration in the x direction times the time. And so to get the final velocity in the x direction, we set this equal to the initial velocity in the x direction. Now we got to go back. Remember, the initial velocity in the x direction was the 0.82 v naught. So we're actually going to have 0.82 v naught plus now the acceleration in the x direction is 0. So then when we multiply this by the time, we don't have to care about that because it zeroes out. So now we have it. The final velocity in the x direction is 0.82 times the v naught, which, hey, it's right there. It's the 41.8 
meters per second that we obtained earlier. So if we do 0.82 times that 41.8, we're gonna get about 34.3. This will be meters per second. So there's your final velocity in the x direction. For the y direction, same idea, just change the subs subscripts. The initial velocity in the y direction was the 0.57 v naught. So we'll have 0.57 v naught right there, plus the acceleration in the y direction times the time. So let's plug in the numbers. We have 0.57 times 41.8 plus the acceleration of negative 9.8 and then the time we figured out was in part b 3.8 seconds so go ahead and punch all this in at one time and when you do that you're going to get a final velocity in the y direction of negative well it's going to come out negative but let's be careful here Let's go back and see if they wanted the velocity or the speed, because that's gonna matter. It does say the velocity components. So velocity is directional, therefore we have to keep the negative sign on here. So there's your final velocity in the y direction. Finally, we need the speed. Now here's how you get the speed. You know that in the x direction, the ball is moving in the positive direction, because your final velocity was positive. And then in the y direction, it's moving downward, because its final velocity was negative and it's going 13.4. These are both in meters per second. The final speed is actually this vector right here. We can call that just V, and that is essentially the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we use Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse squared is equal to one leg of the triangle squared plus the other leg of the triangle squared. If you compute the right-hand side in its entirety, you're going to get 1356, the year I was born. So V squared is equal to about 1356. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, the final speed is about 36.8 meters per second. So that's the answer for the final speed of the ball.